Hi, in this tutorial I'll show you how to make an inverter based on the 555 timer I see and the IRFZ44 MOSFETs. I'll take you through the complete circuit, the piece in out and the final board. The circuit looks as shown. The timer needs to be configured to generate a series of square wave passes with a duty cycle of about 50%. And this is done so by the resistor R1, R2 and the capacitor C1. The frequency is 59 Hz and the formula is given by 1 R over C1 into R1 plus 2 R2. Capacitor C2 is optional but I recommend it because it keeps the output stable regardless of the conditions in the input power supply. The input can be enough from 5 to 12 volts but 12 volts is recommended to completely turn on the output most. Because we have one output at pin 3, we need an additional load gate and this is done so by this BC547 NPN bipolar system. Basically, it inverts the output at pin 3 and this way we can get two signals which can drive the MOSFETs Q1 and Q2 at different times. When the output at pin 3 is high, the MOSFET Q1 will conduct and so allow current to flow from the 12 volts through the winding S3 S4 through the MOSFET Q1 into ground. At the same time, because there is a high pass here, transistor Q3 will turn on and so it will have a ground reference at its correct term and pull down the gate of the MOSFET Q2 to ground, ensuring that the MOSFET Q2 remains completely off. After some time, the output of P3 will go low and so cause the MOSFET Q1 to turn off and because we have a low input here, the transistor Q3 will also turn off and because of this resistor R5, there will be a VCC reference of 12 volts at the corrector of the transistor Q3 and this will pull up the gate of the MOSFET Q2 to VCC, causing it to turn on. Current now flows from the 12 volt rail through the winding S3, S2 to the MOSFET Q2 into ground. The diodes D1 and D2 are Zener diodes written for 12 volts, you can use any from 10 to 12 volts. This protects the gates of the MOSFETs from any voltage above 12 volts. The transformer time for this one should be written to 12, 0, 12, and to 20 volts AC. This way, when used in the reverse manner, you can invert 12 volts to 20 and 20 volts AC. You can use another transformer in the ratio of 1 is to 20, and this should give you an output of 20 and 20 volts to 20 and 40 volts AC. It's worth mentioning that the output will be a square wave AC, and so should only be used to power rods that can tolerate a square wave AC and not those that strictly need a pure sine wave AC. But this is not a problem because most electrical appliances can operate with any kind of AC, such as LED lamps and motors. The capacitors C3 and C4 act as spike arresters. Basically what they do is that any voltage spikes generated across the primary winding, they shot it to ground and so protect the MOSFETs from any voltage applied to their drains that may exceed their written drain source footage. With the IRFZ44 MOSFETs, you can obtain a power of up to 350 watts, which is good for many projects. If you want more power, you can use the IRF3205, which can give you a power of up to 650 watts because they can handle up to about 98 amperes. The IRFZ44 can handle a maximum of about 48 amperes. For more power, you can use the IRF1404, they are written for 162 amperes and so they should have no problem handling 1000 watts or more. And don't forget to mount the MOSFETs on good sized fixings so as to ensure they are negativity and, and prevent them from overheating. The board for the project is as shown. Here you have your battery connections and this is the transformer. This is VCC and the end primary windings. These are the MOSFETs. The timer, it's biasing circuitry. This is the 12 volt ray, you can see all the high current carrying tracks are well thickened to handle the extra current. The board looks as shown. The input, the output, the transformer, the MOSFETs, the IC and the other biasing components. I hope you have enjoyed this video and this soon make sure to give it a like, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel and click the notifications bell. Have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.